from family events to volunteer opportunities to community happenings, there is a lot going on in your community. Learn about all the possibilities and opportunities on this episode of Community Hotline. Hi, welcome to Community Hotline. I'm Monica Weitzel, and we're here at Metro East Community Media in Gresham, Oregon. Tonight we have a full show, and starting it out, we're going to talk with ERCO. ERCO stands for the Immigrant, Immigrant and Refugee Community Organization. And representing ERCO, we have Connie Wintrung, uh, board member, and uh, Nyami Vang, from, uh, a community organizer from ERCO. Thanks for being here, both of you. So um, maybe, uh, Nami, you could start out by telling us a little bit about ERCO um, I know we're specifically going, going to talk about the Pan-Asian uh, Center there, but the ERCO itself, what, tell us what you do there, what the mission is, maybe a little bit of the history okay. if you could. Um, ERCO's mission is to help promote the integration of immigrants, refugees, and the community at large into um, a self-sufficient, healthy, and inclusive multi-ethnic society. That's a mouthful. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot. So we, we do a lot of things. Yeah. Now, yeah. how many different... Uh, ethnic groups or communities do you represent there? Do you have any idea? Yes, <laughs> um, quite a bit. Um, just at the Asian Family Center we are, where we are at, there's over 20 different languages. Wow, we have, just at the... <laughs> just, yeah. Wow, so at ERCO itself, there must be yeah. hundreds? We have, yeah, um, over probably, 100? I think about 80 languages. About 80, I think okay. 80 languages. Wow, because I know just even at um, Reynolds High School alone out here in East County, I've heard that they have around 70 some languages yeah. spoken, which to me would be overwhelming for people like the teachers and the administration at the school. But for people coming from another country here and, and you know, with that many languages spoken, there's not going to be very many people here that speak that language. Yeah, yeah. So probably being able to find somebody who speaks your own language, mm -hmm. understands your culture, it would be a huge reassurance, yes. I would think. Yes. So, so tell me, what are, what are some of the things that you do there? I know you have, um, we'll talk a little bit about yeah. the, the Pan-Asian community yeah. in a minute, but. So ERCO has five primary different locations. Mm -hmm. At ERCO's main location, we focus mostly on the newest arrivals, okay. refugees who are coming here, helping them with pre-employment training, English classes, and other support services. We also have um, Africa House, and that focuses mainly on the African immigrants. We have the Asian Family Center, where we are, um, focusing mostly on the Asian and Pacific Islander communities. Okay. Um, we also have a senior services program that we partner with the county on. Okay. Um, that's at a location in East Portland. And we have the International Language Bank, which directly speaks to what you were saying. We provide high quality translation for all these really difficult to find wow. um, languages. Yeah a lot of them and I'm, yeah. there's more languages than I ever knew ever existed <laughs> it's, it's pretty amazing so Connie as a board member what what is your role in uh, as a board member you help make um, policy and, and decisions regarding <laughs> ERCO is that is, uh, um, in terms of being uh, a dedicated volunteer board member mm -hmm. um, getting to help to provide like advisement and um, any information resources that we can in terms of the programs mm -hmm. that are being held at um, ERCO mm -hmm. and ERCO Asian Family Center specifically. Now um, you, you have a background as a volunteer here however before even being a board member is that right? Yes. So what, what kinds of things did you do as a volunteer at ERCO? Um, as a volunteer I got to for example there was the hepatitis B HIV prevention education project oh. and there was a partnership between ERCO Asian Family Center with Multnomah um, Health uh, Department and so they were really seeking for nurse immuniz immunizers or vac vaccinators. Yeah. <laughs> and so I became known as the super shot nurse. No. Uh, so, you're nurse. so you're a nurse? I am a nurse. Yes. Okay. So I was very honored that I got to be continue to be on the active uh, emailing list to be a volunteer. And so then I also coordinated and helped outreach um, to recruit more nurse volunteers from Good. Oregon Health and Science University School of Nursing. And so the program schools were really supportive of my reaching out. And so we actually Good. had it where there was more more than enough volunteers. And so that was something. That, that doesn't happen very often. Yes, and so really well, you exciting. You must be doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Great. one example. 
So, um, so we have kind of an idea of what of what ERCO does. Now, the, the Asian Center specifically, mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about that. So the Asian Family Center was started in 1994 as a program of ERCO, and we began really focusing on Asian and Pacific Islanders, but our programming has really reached out to um, a lot more people. Our programs help the most vulnerable in our communities. Mm -hmm. We have energy assistance programs, oh. early childhood programs, youth academic programs, health programming, as Connie mentioned, and also community development programs. Wow, so it does touch on a lot. That's a lot, a lot of yeah. stuff to do. <laughs> um, so what specifically, as a community organizer, what does your job entail? So I work at a program called the Asian Pacific Islander Community Leadership Institute. Mm, okay. So it is uh, one of six funded grants through the Meyer Memorial Trust to build community leadership in all our ethnic um, communities. There's um, a Native American component, mm -hmm. there's a Latino, African, African immigrant, and Slavic. So our program in this past year has been working with um, community leaders in many different Asian Pacific Islander communities. We have um, Karen, Chinese, Taiwanese, um, Burmese, uh, Vietnamese, Vietnamese. Yeah. and don't forget yeah. <laughs> Japanese American. Um, just so, just a very wow. broad yes. range. Pulling yeah. them together, having leadership skills workshops, and um, having them focus their passion for their communities and helping to improve the outcomes through advocacy. It's interesting. All the different groups that you just mentioned. Do they work together? So normally, our communities, um, the ethnic communities, are very very active within their own communities. Right. And so this program has been great pulling those different communities together. Yeah, that's what I was wondering yeah. about because I don't think there's usually much opportunity yeah. for different Asian communities that's to come true. together yes. working with each other. Yes. And I wondered how yes. that works yeah. because very diverse cultures. Yes, very diverse. And uh, that must be have some real mm -hmm. challenges. Yeah. Okay. And so we're also a part of um, the Coalition of Communities of Color. So ERCO Asian Family Center is part of this wider coalition working with a lot of these other different groups. And those challenges, you know, language, culture, um, just in the way acculturation, how long people have been here in America. Mm -hmm. You know, some people have been here less than five years. They lived in a refugee camp for uh, 18 years. Oh, boy. And then we have... What a, um, what a, yeah. what a change, what an yeah. obstacle to overcome. Yeah. What are some of the greatest challenges that you've run into? And, and, and you too, Connie, as, a, as a, a volunteer, what are the, some of the greatest challenges that you find other immigrants and refugees yeah. encounter coming to our area here? There is like an overwhelming need, I think, when people come without um, their language skills and knowing where to turn, because there are a lot of resources that people offer, but as a newcomer, they don't know where to go. Of course, And so yeah. the Asian Family Center, ERCO, we really are kind of this one-stop place. People can just come for questions. Well, I was gonna say, it's, it's a great resource center, yes. right? So even if you perhaps don't end up providing them with exactly what they need, you can probably refer them yeah. to where they need to go. Yeah. Or so, help. Or mm -hmm. help, yeah, or, or get the help that they need because there's a lot of great agencies and organizations yeah. and, and community um, groups that are, are there to help. A lot of groups come over here um, with churches, do they not? Is, mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. and how, but how do other people get over here? They have family members here that you know, bring them over, and, but people come over here without anybody mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. That's gotta be overwhelming. Yeah. So they, if they, how do they find out about ERCO? Um, for the most recent uh, arrivals, the mm -hmm. refugees, if they have refugee status, then ERCO has a program with um, the resettlement agency to help that employment training. Okay. So all refugees that come into Oregon actually go through ERCO um, for their training in English and pre-employment skills. Um, for our other locations, it's really just word of mouth within the communities that people find us. Okay. Wow. And we had a, a few, uh, just a few pictures, I think. Okay. Um, and we should probably take a look at those. Um, but yeah, this it sounds like an overwhelming job to be able to, to handle all <laughs> that. But it sounds like you're doing a good job. Okay, what are we looking at here? Um, these are Tongan clients. She's in our um, energy assistance, um, rental assistance program. And she and her daughter are holding up a certificate that she earned um, job readiness. Oh, great. Class that she completed. She looks proud. Yes. <laughs> as well she should be. Um, so these are the uh, classes for the most recent arrivals, the refugees, um, learning computer skills, English language classes at our main ERCO location. Wow. Okay. This is in southeast Portland. Um, northeast, northeast Portland, Portland, right off Gleason, okay. 103rd. Okay. 
Um, this is our uh, civic uh, diversity and civic leadership program. It's funded through the city of Portland. Um, they're there in City Hall, and oh, they've okay. just completed their, their training, and they all have their certificates. Uh, these are um, clients from uh, Bhutan uh, of Nepali culture, okay. and um, they're attending the, the English language classes. Okay. And there's a rather large community yes. from, from that area. So. Yes. Those are the most recent oh, uh, arrivals. Are these are adorable. <laughs> oh, they're so cute. <laughs> these two are in our early childhood parenting uh, programs. Really cute. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Mr. Sockum Touch. He's the executive director of Oh, Earth. great. He's one of the heads of the whole thing. Huh? Yes. <laughs> Big job. Big job. So, so Connie, um, what brought you to start volunteering at ERCO? Um, I actually was um, employed as a health educator and research assistant on the Vietnamese Women's Health Project. Mm -hmm. And so that was back in fall 2007. And so I did that for a year. And then I had to do this thing called my PhD program, and so it kind of... <laughs> um, you're, a, you're a doctor now, you're a doctorate. You're, I, you're a doctor. I am, and, but I, this is a part about that I love about our Asian Family Center is that because I just continue to stay connected, I would continue to be on the email list of, Connie, you were needing some assistance with um, recruitment outreach efforts, and you're really good at those craft things, <laughs> and so I was like, oh, Yes, I you know yes. I could come and help with that, okay. and so there'd be like different opportunities, and then um, and it's again it's that word of mouth, and so from one program coordinator in one program, um, like whether it was the um, the hepatitis B vaccination clinics, or if it's um, helping with uh, outreach efforts for the Women's Women's Health Project, um, and that one had to do with. Um, it was a qualitative research um, about pap smear, screening mm -hmm. beliefs, um, and there's others that with Providence Cancer Center, and so then the word of mouth from program coordinators. So I just my name started to just yeah. continue to be mm -hmm. on the email when you're description good, with them. They'll you know, never leave. <laughs> They'll never get rid of you. And, and I would be so honored to like to know that I can bring my skill set to help. Sure. And so for volunteering wise and continuing with that in kind contribution, there's a self rewarding, and so okay. that's something that I love to do. Okay. And um, it's true, isn't it? People get you get more out of volunteering. You ever feel like you give you know you, you, you mm -hmm. go to help other people but you end up really helping yourself too and the other thing is that with staff they will donate their own time on top of the regular FTE uh -huh. so I would actually see them like oh my gosh so they're providing their own in-kind contribution um, to make sure that the program mission and values are being met right. as well as the aims of the project and that to me spoke so much to me personally mm -hmm. and so it makes it easy for me to want to continue um, to volunteer that's so that's good role good, modeling. Good. Yes it is. <laughs> Tell me about this event that's coming up. So we are celebrating um, Asian Family Center programming, as well as celebrating the diverse Asian and Pacific Islander communities. Um, May is API Heritage Month, and okay. so we are having the a fundraiser on May 10th okay. at the Governor Hotel in downtown Portland. Nice. And so um, we can't say prices on the air, but if, okay. are, if, you are, if you're interested yeah. in getting information, sure. go to your website, yes. and we'll have a, um, some information on our screen there, sure. too. But this is open to anyone? Yes. Okay, you don't have to be an islander. You don't have to no, be No, 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 no. We would like everyone to come but and learn more about it. This is a fundraiser. It is a fundraiser. And awareness. Yes. Yeah, it's trying to build awareness. Yes. Great. So, and what can people expect at this event? Um, they can expect to hear Portland Mayor um, Charlie Hales. He'll be speaking at the event, and we'll have several cultural performances. We have lion dance. Oh, um, fun. A Polynesian dance group. That's lion, not lion. <laughs> That's right, lion. <laughs> a lot of symbols and a lot of noise. Uh, um, fun. We'll have dances from the Hmong American community, okay, from the Bhutanese Nepali community, uh -huh. as well as Pacific Islander dances. Wonderful. Yeah. Oh, that's so great to celebrate yeah. the different heritages yes. that we have that are represented here. Mm -hmm. Before we run out of time, because we're just about out, is there anything else you'd like to say about ERCO and the services or the, the Asian Cent Family Center? Anything we should know? We do a lot of work and we really um, hope that people will continue to support us. 
And, and you and do take donations, do. I assume, yes. and probably need volunteers always. Yes. Always need volunteers. So especially someone maybe who has is has language skills in another language other mm -hmm. than English is mm -hmm. probably especially yeah. needed. Yeah. Okay. Check out our website. We have a lot of information. It's been newly redesigned. Good. So we have a lot of information Good. on there. Good. Wonderful. Thank you both for being on here. I appreciate it. If you're interested in finding out more about ERCO or if you're a new, um, new arrival to this country and need some help, that's the place to go. So go ahead and check out their website and um, don't go away. We'll be right back with more from Community Hotline. <laughs>